Uh, this is problem four from chapter 30. Uh, here we have a long straight wire and a small rectangular wire loop lying in the same plane. So long straight wire and a rectangular loop on the same plane. So this is problem four. Or there is a current passing through uh, the straight wire. The distance between wire and the plane is L1. And to the far side of the loop, it's um, L2. There is the height of this loop is given by W. Okay. Determine the mutual inductance in terms of L1, L2, and W. Assume the wire is very long compared to L1, L2, and W, and that the rest of the circuit is very far away compared to L1, L2, and W. So we're going to assume that this is something, uh, an infinite current carrying wire, and of course, this is going to produce some magnetic field, some magnetic flux over there, and this is going to lead to the inductance. Okay. So uh, we'll start uh, by uh, deciding which one we're going to do. I think it's much easier to calculate the magnetic field of this one uh, over here and calculating the flux that way. So we're going to proceed this way. So let's call this one our first element. This is going to have a magnetic field that is into the board over here. It's not going to be uniform. It's going to you know, decrease inversely proportional to distance from, from here, but it's going to be, you know, uh, in the, uh, all in the uh, same direction. So the magnitude of the magnetic field is going to be given by mu over 2 pi I1 over R, where R will be this distance. So let me choose a coordinate system here. Let's say that you know, this is R, R0 is here, and I'm just going to measure it this way. Now, how are we going to calculate the flux to calculate the mutual inductance? Now, there is, remember, mutual inductance looks something like this, the total flux in one of the elements, let's call this N2, is going to be proportional to uh, the mutual inductance times the current in the other one. Sometimes we call this M21, but mutual inductance is the same. Uh, either you're looking at the influence of this on that or this on that, so we can just drop the subscript and call this simply M. So I need to calculate this flux. Okay, so there's a, uh, another form of definition for mutual inductance where we take the time derivative of this. That's useful experimentally, this is useful for theoretical calculations. So N2 here is of course one, okay. it goes away. To calculate the flux due to this magnetic field, let's call this N2 one to indicate that it's uh, arising from the effects of the first current. Uh, we need to calculate the magnetic field and calculate the flux. So the formula for flux for a uniform magnetic field is B times A, but our magnetic field is not uniform. So what we need to do is we need to divide this into little pieces over each piece, the magnetic field is going to be uniform, and then we can add up those infinitesimal pieces, which comes down to an integral. Yeah? So phi through one is going to be integral of some little fluxes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this into little strips. They're each going to have some thickness dr. Okay? And the magnetic field over these strips is going to be uniform. They all have the same distance r from the current carrying wire, so magnetic field is uniform. I don't need to divide this into other little parts as well. So this is going to be have some little d phi. That d phi is the magnetic field times the area. And that area is simply this dr times w. So this is b w dr. Okay? And that b is, of course, uh, given by this formula, so I can now write this, this goes from R1, uh, sorry, uh, L1 to L2, L1 to L2, uh, mu zero over two pi, uh, I over R, W, dr. All of these are constants and this actually gives a simple uh, logarithmic inter uh, integral. So one over R integral is a uh, natural logarithm R, and this comes down to a difference of logarithms that a difference of logarithms is equal to logarithm of ratios. So I can simply write down the answer I W uh, ln R2 over R1. This is equal to N times I1. So this is of course also one. So I1 goes away with 
I1, the remaining expression is going to be our mutual inductance.